Welcome back. Featuring Fender today. Uh, out of sequence, actually. I was going in sub one of a chronological order, and I realized Fender is so loved, yet they're so off into the future compared to where we're at with uh, our pit chronology that it could be some time before we get there. So we're going to jump ahead to Fender and then go back to the uh, 1920s and 30s. Ah. Uh, these are the oldest fenders right here. You're looking at them. Some of the rarest patterns, too. And a uh, quick run through. We could see we have a dozen 351 shapes. And we have uh, three, two other shapes right here and here. You could see the shoulders here and the body here is different than the standard 351 right here. And then we have a dozen of the 358 and a half jazz size picks lacing the sides. Now these are arranged by age from about 1955 to 1964. These are all 1950 picks right here. Fender started uh, having their pr picks produced by DeAndrea then, and uh, who offered to put their name on the picks, and they, they agreed. So from 1950 to about 1964, this was the Fender logo. Interestingly, Leo Fender was the owner up until that time, 64, and then it was sold to CBS. Whereupon we see the logo uh, shape, pick shape changing, and the logo size changing, and the logo itself. Uh, but back down to these here, these were produced, the small jazz, 358 and a half, they were produced from the start of these, 1955, but up into the 1970s, uh, about 1970 actually. So we have this occurring over a 12 year period and uh, the jazz picks and these occurring over a uh, nine year period. Uh, really interesting to look at all those different celluloids these right here are the wheat straw variety. Here's sometimes referred to as coke on ice or slow gin on ice. Here's this pattern here is so uh, so old actually that rarely do you see print on it, usually occurring in the 1940s, but it made it into the 50s, and here we see it with print. This, uh, this particular wheat straw here is verified on a 1957 Rickenbacker pick card that we'll see later on. So that's completely authenticated. And I know for a fact that this was early 60s. These were 1950s. Uh, early 60s. This could be 1950s. I should have placed it up there because it's, it's also a whiskey on ice. And then these two, uh, early 60s to 64. But in look at, looking at these, this is really associated usually with Ernie Ball. So it could be that after Fender sold Fender to CBS, they started having the picks produced by Ernie Ball. Uh, that's uncertain, but the shape would seem to suggest that. And uh, this logo here, this Fender F, seems to be an enlargement of this one. But actually, this pick right here is the rarest pick on the board. And I've seen it occur once. There's another one out there somewhere, not, a, not as good condition, but I've never seen it again once in, in over 25 years of collecting. But to acquire any of these is actually very difficult. Uh, this is just over the top difficult to acquire. So I hope you enjoy looking at them. Uh, they are beautiful. Uh, I, I, I certainly love them, but it's uh, such a popular name that would have been remiss not to feature them, at least at this time, if not sooner. Thanks for joining me. And uh, maybe I should point out a few other details. They're all made of celluloid, and uh, most all by DeAndrea, with the possible exception of these two. Uh, came in various gauges, thin, medium, and heavy. And... Uh, there you have it. I think the most interesting thing about them is the striking uh, visual appearance they have. Thanks. And I'll see you soon. We're going to go back and look at some really rare grips from the uh, 1910 through 1940 period. Next video. Bye-bye.